Overclockers. My name is Bryony and in this Overclockers Academy video, we're going to be answering the question, how to mount and install your all-in-one cooler. Keep watching to learn why it's important to install it correctly, what mounting options are available, and which orientation is considered to be the best and why. If you're new to PCs, you might be wondering what is an AIO? It stands for all-in-one cooler and this water cooling solution is way more convenient and affordable than a custom liquid cooling leap. An AIO can help ensure lower CPU temperatures with less fan noise than air coolers and I also consider them to be more aesthetically appealing. Especially this MAG Core Liquid E360 from MSI with its sleek white aesthetic and RGB lighting and fans, which I'll be using to demonstrate in this video. If we take a closer look, you can see that it's made up of a CPU block that mounts to your motherboard with a bracket. Inside here is where you'll find the pump that moves the coolant through these braided tubes, which are attached to the radiator, which is at the top here. The radiator has a large surface area for dissipating heat from the coolant when combined with the ARGB fans, which are installed directly onto the side. They are typically sealed and have features such as evaporation proof tubing, which means they don't need to be serviced or maintained over their lifespan, making them the perfect cooling solution for great performance and easy trouble free use. They are an all in one solution. You'll need to make sure there's room to install an AIO cooler in your PC case, preferably in the top back or rear, exhausting your CPU heat out of the chassis. You can check the spec sheet supplied by the manufacturer of your PC case to see what it can support and where. Look for radiator size and remember to also check the combined depth of your radiator and fans will clear the other components. In this tutorial, our MSI MagCore Liquid is a 360 millimeter all-in-one cooler. Remember to also take into consideration the requirements of your CPU. First of all, the socket type such as AM5 or LGA1700 and then the cooling capacity required. A larger 360mm cooler will be needed for powerful CPUs such as the Intel i9 or Ryzen 9 as they use more power and produce more heat. It's best to check your CPU's TDP, which will be listed by the manufacturer, and ensure you choose a cooler that can handle that TDP. For example, a 120 mm AIO is roughly 150 watts, 240 is 250 watts, 280 is 300, 360 is 350, and 420 is 400 watts. Our MagCore Liquid 360 has an enlarged copper surface area on the block to ensure good contact with this larger generation of new CPUs. This is a feature well worth looking out for when selecting your cooler. There are several factors to consider when deciding where to mount your all-in-one cooler, such as case design, airflow, and personal preference. Depending on your choice of case, various mounting options will be available, such as the top, front, or bottom of the PC case. Our MPG Gungit 300R case from MSI can support our 360mm radiator on the top or front, but you could also install a 120 in the rear or 240 at the top. Mounting the radiator at the top is normally the best option and most mid and full tower cases are designed with this in mind. You can almost always fit a 240 or 360 millimeter cooler up top, allowing the heat of your components to rise and be exhausted out of your case for the best airflow. You can rotate the radiator so the tubes sit at either the front or the back of the case, just to ensure they won't interfere with your other fans. The front of the case usually has enough space for an all-in-one radiator too, and you can mount it here if you want to. For example, some cases may only support a 360 mm cooler in the front, and maybe you want space for push and pull fans, or you might prefer how it looks aesthetically. 
However, this is only recommended if the tubes connecting the radiator to the pump are at the bottom, with the top end of the radiator above the pump. This will make it easier for the air to naturally sit at the top of the radiator. Air is normal inside an AIO and some fluid is expected to evaporate through the tubes over time. However, if it's trapped at the wrong place, it may reduce its efficiency or even cause problems to the pump in the long term. Choosing where to mount the all-in-one cooler is important to ensure optimal cooling performance and system stability, which will help prolong the life of your hardware and guarantee you are getting the most performance. Step one, gather your tools and prepare your PC. Before you begin, make sure you have all the necessary tools and components ready, such as your cooler, thermal paste, a screwdriver, an isopropyl or rubbing alcohol to clean your CPU. Power down your PC and unplug all the cables. Open up the side panel of your case to access the internals. If you're replacing an existing cooler, carefully remove it by unscrewing the mounting brackets or clips. Clean off any residual thermal paste from the CPU using the isopropyl and a cloth. Step two, install the backplate. Locate the backplate included with your AIO cooler. Align it with the holes on the back of your motherboard, ensuring you use the correct one for your socket type. The brackets will be different for Intel and AMD, and you can look in the manual or they might be writing on the bracket itself. Then attach it using the recommended fittings or screws included with your cooler. Each mounting mechanism might be slightly different, so don't panic if it looks different to our MSI MagCore liquid cooler. Step three, connect the fans. Attach the fans to the radiator using the included screws. Check the manual to make sure you use the right ones and don't damage your radiator. Make sure the fans are orientated to blow air through the radiator for optimal cooling performance. You can tell which way round they go by looking at the fan blades. Also consider the orientation of the cables for easier cable management later on. Step four, mount the radiator. Find a suitable location inside your case to mount the radiator. Taking into account what we spoke about earlier in regard to the placement, which may vary depending on your case design. Use the provided screws to secure the radiator in place. Step five, thermal paste. Check to see if your cooler comes with thermal paste pre-applied. If not, apply a small pea-sized amount of thermal paste onto the center of your CPU. You can also use a line or a cross or carefully spread a thin layer. This helps improve thermal conductivity between the CPU and the cooler and is a very important step that you do not want to miss. Step six, mount the pump. Carefully position the pump unit block over the CPU, ensuring the thermal paste makes good contact. Secure the pump in place using the provided screws or bracket. Be gentle to avoid damaging the CPU or motherboard and don't over tighten. I prefer to use my hands so I can stop as soon as I feel any resistance. Step seven, connect the pump. Locate the pump header on your motherboard. Connect the pump's power cable to this header to provide power. You can also use the CPU fan header and then set it as an AIO pump in the BIOS later on. Additionally, connect any RGB or fan control cables to the relevant headers on your motherboard. Step eight. That is it. Take some time to tidy up the cables inside your case, ensuring they're neatly rooted and tucked behind the motherboard tray and secured to avoid any interference with the airflow. After your AIO cooler is installed, it's important to make sure everything is staying cool as expected. Overheating hardware can cause instability while you're gaming or even cause damage to the delicate components. There are plenty of different software packages available that can help test your hardware's performance 
And for temperature testing, I like to download HW Monitor. It's a simple monitoring program that reads your PC system's main health sensors. You can then run something like Cinebench 2024, a demanding benchmark on a loop that's going to put your CPU under load, creating heat so you can test the efficiency of your cooling. Anything up to around 85 degrees Celsius is normally okay. Your CPU will begin throttling and reducing the clock speed if it does get too hot, such as over 90 degrees Celsius, which can hurt the performance. If you notice the temperature suddenly shooting up and your CPU overheating, check your fans on your cooler are spinning. Then turn your PC off and see that the pump cable is plugged in correctly and set as a pump header in your BIOS. Finally, check the CPU block is mounted correctly and is making good firm contact with your CPU and the thermal paste. You can see that our MSI Magcore liquid is keeping the i5-13600K nice and cool and we tested a peak temperature of just 66 degrees Celsius. I hope that you found this Overclockers UK Academy tutorial useful. Remember to choose your AIO cooler carefully. Ensure it fits in your case in the correct orientation. Take time installing it using the right bracket for your CPU socket, not forgetting the thermal paste, and then test the performance to ensure it's working as expected. Remember, if you're not sure, you can always ask a question in the comments or contact our friendly team of tech experts for further assistance. If you love the look of the beautiful white MSI Magcore Liquid E360 cooler we used in this video, make sure to check the link in the description below to get yours now on the Overclockers UK website. I think I'll be keeping this one.